Hello students, my name is Niyati Said. Thanks for watching Edipedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is Phylum Hemichordata. Turn your frustration into fun with your online tutor Niyati Said. So let's proceed towards our topic that is Phylum Hemichordata. Hemichordata is a small unusual phylum or you can say that earlier it was considered as a subphylum under phylum chordata okay they are of uh, worm like creatures that are closely related to the phylum chordata and echinodermata okay they vary widely in size from the 8 feet length of a corn worm to the 1 by 25 inches that is 1 millimeter length of tarot branches okay the phylum Hemichordata it includes about 90 described species of Enterneost, which is a class of Hemichordata, and around 30 described tarot branches. Okay. The two living classes also vary in appearances. Which two classes? Enterapneost and tarot branches. Okay. That, that's why the two living classes they also vary in appearances and habitats okay a corn worm are large individuals that borrow through sediment like a earthworm okay and digesting any organic material in the soil or feeding on the suspended particle in the water okay whereas on the other hand taro branch they form large colonies in which each individual is connected to another by stems these creatures they create their own own homes a series of tubes composed of collagen secreted by their glands on their bodies okay have an organ system level of organization they lack a notochord okay uh, body is bilateral symmetry they are triploblastic in nature they, ha they are silomates their body is cylindrical okay and hemichordata are distinguished by tripartite that is threefold division of the body at the forward end of the body there is a pre-oral lobe which is known as proboscis okay and just behind that pre-oral lobe there is a collar and the last comes a trunk okay Hemichordata do have several features that despite the other differences link the classes together. Okay. First off, all hemichordata have a threefold division as I have told you just now. And all hemichordata have pharyngeal slits or gill slits that open into the pharynx. Okay. Acorn worms have up to 200 of these. Tero branches have only one. Okay. I repeat, all hemichordata have pharyngeal slits or gill slits that open into the pharynx. A corn worm, which belongs to the class Enterapneost of uh, phylum hemichordata, a corn worms they have up to 200 of these. 200 of gill slits that open into the pharynx. Whereas, tarot branches they have only one gill slit. Okay. Do you know an interesting feature of hemichordates? An interesting feature in the hemichordata is the stomochord located in the collar. Collar is the area just behind the preoral lobe that is proboscis. Okay? This stomochord they closely resembles the notochord of the chordata. As the chordata uh, phylum they have notochord which is the distinguishing features of chordata. And this stomochord, which is present in the collar area of hemichordata, they closely resembles the notochord of the chordata. Okay. Another feature that resembles that of chordata are the presence of two nerve cords: a dorsal nerve cord and a smaller ventral nerve cord. Okay. Due to these similarities to the phylum chordata, hemichordata was once placed in the phylum. But DNA studies have shown that hemichordata are closely closer to the echinoderms than the chordata. Okay, and so they were placed in their own phylum. Okay, and uh, apart from this, uh, if we talk about 
class Entarpneosta, a corn worm, they fragment small pieces from the trunk. Okay, trunk is the last comes last part uh, just after the collar. So, which each of which can grow into a new individual. Okay, a corn worms are filter feeders. Okay, because they selectively trap suspended organic particles from the water with their proboscis, which is a pre-oral lobe. Okay, which is mucus filled. Hmm? Hemichordata, they are dioecious in nature. That means, that is, there are separate males and females, although they cannot be distinguished morphologically. With external fertilization, that means, and uh, whose development is indirect. That is, there is a distinct larva form. Okay. And if we talk about their uh, circulatory system, then that is of open type. And if we talk about their respiration, then respiration takes place through gills. Excretory organ is the proboscis gland, which is a pre-oral lobe. Okay. Sexes are separate, as I just told you. And uh, fertilization is external and development is indirect. For example, balanoglossus and sacoglossus. Okay. This is the representation of a phylum hemichordata. This is eye, this is a skull, brain, lower jaw. These are the testes, which are the male sex organs. These are the kidney. What This is the vertebrae, vertebrae, okay, stomach to call cord, okay. Now, the phylum hemichordata is divided into three living classes. Mainly pterobranchia, enteropneusta, and planktospheroidea. Okay, and there's one dead class also that we will be discussing later after living classes. So let's proceed towards the first class that is enteropneusta. Enteropneusta, uh, with more than 70 species, they comprise the majority of the hemichordata. They are typical acorn worms. Okay, more than 70 species, they comprise the majority of the hemichordates. Okay, feeding is either by filter feeding or substrate feeding. Okay, they live in burrows in the substrate that is uh, mud or uh, sand, you can say, or under the rocks in both shallow and deeper waters. Okay, feeding is either filter feeding or substrate eating. Okay, the proboscis, which is a pre oral lobe, is small in both types and the collar is very small. Okay, proboscis is held out of the borrow entrance and the organic particles are caught in the mucus, which is swept to the mouth by the beating of the cilia. Okay, their skin is covered with cilia as well as glands that secrete mucus. Some produce bromide compound that gives them a small which protect them from the predators. Okay. Reproduction is by sexual means. Okay. Both sexes have sev uh, several sex organs in the pharyngeal region and it is seen that their fertilization is external. Okay. And if we talk about their feeding in detail, then feeding is either filter feeding or substrate eating. Okay, substrate eaters like Belanoglossus from the Mediterranean Sea are generally larger than filter feeders. Okay, they consume large amount of mud or sand and digest the organic matter within it. They deposit their waste on the surface much like earthworm cast. Okay, as we have read in class uh, in phylum Annelida. Okay. Their burrows may have several openings at one end. They seldom leave their burrows. Okay. And now come to the filter feeders. The, uh, the one which we talked about was the substrate feeder. Now come to the filter feeders. Filter feeders have a mucus secreting glands and numerous cilia on their proboscis, which is a pre-oral lobe. The proboscis is held out of the burrow entrance and the organic material, as I have just shown you or pointed to this point that organic materials was caught in the uh, are caught in the mucus which is slept to the mouth by the beating of the cilia okay 
These species can cover their mouth with their collar and thus avoid eating inorganic or otherwise undesirable material. That means they are also choosy. That, and now if we talk about their digestive system, this is the representation of a class uh, Enteropneostra. This is proboscis, this is collar collar area just behind proboscis there is a collar and this is the trunk part and this is enners okay there are genital wings also which uh, which covers the genital areas this is the mid dorsal ridge this is hepatic cecum and the, this is the hepatic region now if we talk about their digestive system the digestive system is through gut gut is this now gut and this ends to the anus okay behind the mouth just behind the mouth there is a buccal cavity which leads into the pharynx this is the pharynx okay which possess gill slits these gill slits are believed to be used primarily to assist gaseous exchange that is that process is known as respiration the pharynx they leads into, into an esophagus okay um, pharynx is not uh, shown here but yes uh, the pharynx leads into an esophagus which in turn leads to an intestine which is the main site for digestion the intestine leads ultimately into the anus okay if you talk about their uh, gaseous exchange that is respiration gaseous exchange occurs over a whole body as well as in the pharyngeal slits the blood is colorless and has no respiratory pigments it is forced through the animal's few vessel by beating of a muscular heart that forces blood through the central sinuses okay the heart constricts the sinus but the blood does not actually enter the heart so it is not a heart in a strictest sense okay the blood passes through the two longitudinal blood vessels and a series of sinuses told you just for your of your knowledge okay now if we talk about their reproduction reproduction can occur as a result of fragmentation okay of the adult body however it is normally involves the two sexes and egg fertilization okay both sexes have numerous gonads and fertilization is external as i have just told you the females extrude egg masses onto the surface of the substratum from within their burrows just imagine they lay 2000 to 3000 eggs at a time Okay. Males also release their sperm onto the water. The sperm swim and seek out the egg which is believed they detect chemically. Okay. The fertilized egg develops into a ternaria larvae and lives as a part of the plankton that floats into the sea for several weeks until it undergoes a metamorphosis into the three body sections that adult possesses and sinks to the sea floor okay i'm telling you just for the uh, knowledge okay now come to the class pterobranchia with only about 10 to 20 species the pterobranchia they make up less than one fifth of the hemichordate okay they are small animals that range in the size from one to two to millimeters in length okay the branch branchia they live in much deeper water than the enteropneus okay uh, enteropneus this and their soft body means that they are difficult to study and much less is known about their ecology okay now if we talk about their anatomy then the preoral lobe which is proposes it is modified into a shield which secretes the collagenous case which is also used for locomotion that is known as locophore okay now come to the collar part collar is modified to produce between um, one and nine pair of tentacles and that is known as locophore arms okay the tentacles they secrete mucus which is driven along with the 
food particles trapped in it to the mouth by beating of the cilia okay the mucus and the accompany uh, particles are then digested by several enzymes okay or uh, you can say that are then digested now come to its trunk part trunk part is very short and sac like rather than being uh, long and thin and the digestive tract is usually u shaped the animal's anus is then on the animal's back oppos approximately opposite to the animal's mouth okay and it is seen that the trunk ends in the contractile this is the representation of uh, class and pterobranchia this is proboscis this is collar region and this is the trunk region and just after that there is a anus okay so the animal anus is then on the animal's back approximately opposite to the animal's mouth okay the trunk ends in a contractile prehensile prehensile means it can grip like a monkey's tail okay this stalk is used for support in some species okay now if we talk about their reproduction reproduction is by asexual means by budding budding is very common and often give rise to colonies starting from a single individual however sexual reproduction is the normal method of reproduction and it is similar to that in the enteric neus with external fertilization however each animal has only single gonad and the larva is believed not to be a tornaria though it is poorly known okay now the question arises how pterobranchia is different from enteropneust so the pterobranchies are to differ from the uh, enteropneust in the position of only one or in some species no pharyngeal slits okay because these animals are generally very small there is no problem with the respiration occurring simply across the body surface okay now come to the third class that is plankto spheroidea this class has only one species that is plankto spheria pelagica which is mainly known for its larva its larva name is tornaria tornaria larva of this species are many fold larger than that those of other species okay uh, other species larva is just few say below 10 mm long but it is around 25 mm long and is spherical in shape and transparent but otherwise it is quite similar to other enteropneust larva that have a gelatinous body which is covered with numerous cilia okay the only species uh, which is known as planktosphera pelagica it is unique in possessing mucus secreting glands around the ciliated band okay this is the representation of this class now come to the fourth class this is known as dead class okay this is the distinct class of phylum hemichordata this is as i have told you earlier that this is a dead class of phylum hemichordata those three classes were the living classes but this is the dead class most fossil graptolites look nothing more than tiny saw blades graptolites have possessed gas filled sacs which is used for their floating okay this is the fossil of this class so this comes to an end in the next section we'll be discussing about the phylum chordata okay so stay tuned thank you